Welcome back, my little silk moth friends. Today we had our first little girl emerge, and I'm very, very excited. Today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how I do keep my silk moth cocoons inside the tote. It does get really dirty in there because they have to let out all their little poopies before they get up into their crates and spin. Behind the scenes, you guys don't see the dirty, gnarly parts that moth keepers uh, do clean up. Here I will definitely show you all that stuff. And it's it's not the prettiest, I mean it's poop, but there's things you can do to make sure that the poop doesn't mold and things like that inside the tote and we'll go over that today too. But real quick, let's talk about this cute little patootie. Back behind here, that's her ovipositor. That's how I know that this is a female. And she did successfully emerge on her own. So that is really exciting. I'm always happy to see that, and I'm really hoping that all of them do that. Here's my gross tote. Here's their little dookies down there. The white stuff, that's just calcium powder that you sprinkle onto your reptiles. That just helps keep the humidity low in here so things don't mold and get gross. Things start molding and get gross, you're in trouble, okay? You will lose lose all of your moths. Nothing's going to make it. It's going to be bad news. Don't let anything ever mold with your silk moths. Today I'm probably going to pick out as much poop as I can but not disturb any of these adhering silk strands because if I do they can get tangled in that if it's all loose and then them coming out just doesn't really work out very well. Sometimes you'll find worms that didn't even cocoon and it's hard to tell if these guys are going to pupate or end up dying off but fingers crossed they just pupate. I prefer clear totes, then I can see what's going on inside. Also, they will spin behind the egg crates too, and this allows you to be able to see if anybody's stuck or, you know, whatever. One day I'd like to do like an enclosure type thing, but with all my reptile enclosures, it's hard to fit another giant enclosure in here for just silk moth cocooning. And then another thing I gotta do is pull out some eggs to start my next round of silkworms and I literally just keep them in my refrigerator. So I'm just gonna open up my bag here. I just take out my bottom one. I always do bottom up. You can do it however you want. And then I'm gonna put these guys back in the refrigerator because in about two weeks I'll take out my next round of eggs as well. All right, so here's my egg container and you can see there's probably like a good three, 400 in here. I'm gonna let them all hatch out and all I do is put them on top of my leopard gecko enclosure. So you can see these gray eggs here and these white eggs here. These white eggs were never fertilized, so those will never hatch. But these gray eggs, you're gonna wait for them to lighten up and after they lighten up, the worms will emerge shortly after. Essentially, all I do is I go into my reptile room. I put a little bit of humidity in here because the eggs will dry out. I have had them dry out, especially after coming out of the refrigerator. And all I do is I put on a little cap. There are a couple ventilation holes. And this is the most unconventional way, but here's my leopard gecko enclosure. I literally put it up here off to the side of the heat and I just check every couple days. 